Hello everyone, today we're going to do a values and shading tutorial using a pen. Um, we're going to cover cross-hatching and it's going to be a really simple way to understand how values work. So to start with, I'm going to give you, we're going to do a value scale and it's going to be real quick. So draw a, a rectangle, draw a bigger one, and then draw an even bigger one. Like that. First one divided in half, second one divided into thirds, fourth one, third one divided into fifths, like that. Okay? Um, from here, we're gonna use the leftmost one will always be white, and the rightmost one will be dark. I'm gonna start in the third one because that one will make more sense to us. So, um, We've done value scales before. If you haven't, just follow along as best you can. Um, with cross hatching, you don't really have much to shade with, so you're using lines to do it instead. So if you watch carefully, I'm not going to worry too much about the spacing of my lines or how perfect it is. I'm just going to do a basic rough hatch, like so. And with enough practice, you can get these super even, super consistent. But this is just an exercise to give you an idea of what, how it works. So that's one hatch. Um, you're going to continue this into this quadrant here. Like so. Um, don't worry if you mess up like the spacing or whatever. If you do it if you do it over a larger area, it'll it'll be less noticeable. And when you are hatching, you are looking very close. When you look further away, it won't matter. It's when you try and correct it is that when it becomes noticeable. Um, so now, in this quadrant only, we're going to go across in the opposite direction. And we want the lines to basically be like this. Okay, so we don't want them sort of parallel like that or whatever that is, I've forgotten what it's called, but you want them on right angles to each other. So you just go in the opposite direction. And if you find that tricky, you can always rotate the page. All right, never be afraid to rotate the page. I just can't really do it so well here because I have to keep it underneath the camera, like so. So this will be your first value of nothing. This will be your second value of something. This will be your third value of super cross hatched okay and uh you can actually blend using this method but we won't worry about that yet um this one up here we're gonna do the same as this one but we're gonna do it slightly differently because we only have two values here what we're gonna do is this so one Three. And four. And actually cross hatching is a great way to practice your straight lines. Um, and what you'll realize is if you look further away, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, as you can see, this is really dark, and this is what we want with a two-value scale. With a three-one, we want to distinctly blend it. Um, you could always start with lines in this one as well. So we'll, I'll show you anyway, since we're here. Um, you can do this. I think this might be a better way of doing it. I'm just still figuring that out. Um, so even your white value will be, um, because you can have one extra, which is highlight. Uh, so then you can have more flexibility in your shading. And then this one will be two, and then this one will be three. So then you have three distinct value scales with the chance of a highlight. Um, with the five one, we don't need to worry about highlights. We're just going to do this, but in in here. So from here, one, two, 
and, and, and try doing it fast. You might not get the best quality, but sometimes you just don't have the time for that. Or if you're sketching, this is a really nice quick way to get some shading in without having to go like this. Um, just see if you can keep the spacing quite neat and then eventually see if you can get the lines to be a bit more clean. So that's one. You're basically doing layering, which is also an important technique when you want to do shading with pencil. So if you're a pencil shader, if you like graphite better, this is still a valuable way to learn how to layer because ink doesn't really have stronger lines or deeper lines the harder you press. It's just going to be the same no matter what. Um, so this is a good way to understand how layering works. Like so. And then the last one. So it's a very simple way to think about it. You just add more lines the darker you want to get. So how do we apply this into objects? So if we draw a cube, uh, we can use the three value scale. Um, you can choose whether or not you want to highlight or not. This one I won't do a highlight because I want to test out. So I'm also experimenting while I'm showing you this. I want to test out if this one looks better or the highlight one looks better. Uh, so from here, I'm going to do everything in one layer. And it's important you tr test out and see which version you like, because sometimes it, it, it's a matter of uh, taste as well, or depends on your subject matter, or depends on what you like. Um, but always be willing to try another one, maybe on a less important drawing if you feel uncomfortable doing something new with something you're already doing, and then see if it works. And if you like it, then you've got a new tool under your belt, which is always nice. So we do one layer, and then I'm gonna do a second layer. Second layer here. And then the third layer here. Like so. And then if we wanted a cast shadow, we can just do this. And then from here, Like so. Okay. So you can do it like that. Um, the other way is you just leave this white. You do one layer here and then two layers on here. Um, you can even do it with spheres, which I might not have time to do very well. So we can have highlight. We can use the three, the scale here. Um, just divide it into quadrants. So this will be the darkest. This will be semi-light. This will be semi-light. So here, you just do that. Then we can cross on this one. And then maybe cross over again, and that one will be down there. And then we can just round it out with that. And then we have a sphere shading with one highlight. So give that a try, have fun with it. Um, it's something you can always go back to if you need to or understand layering. So ask any questions. I appreciate all the comments and the love. Thank you very much. I'll catch you next time.